Welcome to Cunningham Piano. I'm Hugh Sung. And I'm Rich Gallicini. Welcome. Rich. You. I've got, <laughs> I've got a, a whopper of a question for you. And uh, <laughs> so we've already talked about this question and started videotaping. We, we, I think we shot this thing like five times and we, we came to the conclusion this question is too big to answer one video, so we're going to slice and dice this one. But let me ask the big question first. Go ahead. And then maybe we'll just focus on something else. So what is the question? The big question is, what are pianos made of? We, we could literally spend hours on this subject, couldn't we? Absolutely. It's a, it's a passion of our lives. Yeah. And I could spend all day talking about it. Especially since Cunningham Piano has specializes in rebuilding mm -hmm. pianos and building our own pianos. Uh, you know, we're really the experts in terms of the materials involved. So let's do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll just focus on what specific parts of the piano we're going to focus on in this video. And then maybe in successive videos, we can talk about other parts and what those parts are made out of. Sounds great. That yeah. sounds great. But in general terms, now, yeah. pianos we know are made out of organic materials. Mm -hmm. So the entire piano is made out of woods, mm -hmm. leathers, felts, and metal in the strings in the cast iron frame. Um, so these things expand and contract with, with changes in humidity. Um, they might react a little differently to you one day than the next, right? Um, so these are part of what make a piano wonderful and organic and... and unique. Yes, really unique, unique, absolutely. Right, as opposed to sounding all the same, they mm -hmm. all have their own characteristics, which change with the seasons and over time. Anyway, so why don't we do this? Here's a question, just a general question. What are the keys of the piano made of? Now, there are white keys and black keys. Let's start there. Okay, so okay. before we go much further, okay. let's go back 200 years ago. All right. Because the first Forte pianos had keys. Mm -hmm. They didn't have them covered in plastic. They actually didn't have them covered in anything. Mm. They were wooden keys. Mm -hmm. So we usually had one shade of wood for what we call the whites now, mm -hmm. right? The naturals. Mm -hmm. And another shade of wood for what we call the sharps or the blacks or ebonies. Now, as time went by, um, ivory was a substance that was beautiful. It felt good under the fingers. And it gave it sort of a classy look. So ivory started to become used for what we call the white keys. Mm. And different woods were still used for the sharps, but the black against the white became striking and became common. Uh, and that's what things started to be for, for a long time. Hmm. Now today, of course, ivory is no longer used. In the 1950s, I'm very proud, the American piano industry was the first industry as a nation that said, we're not going to use ivory on a hmm. regular basis anymore. Hmm. It didn't mean that you couldn't still order an American piano, a high-end one particularly, with ivory keys, people still did that until probably the late 1980s. Hmm. Um, but we were the first nation as a piano industry, or piano industry as a nation, that stopped using ivory keys. And today we use acrylics. Now, the first plastic keys, if you've played a piano, and I'm sure you have, that was built in, say, the 1960s that had plastic keys, what did it feel like to you? So this is really interesting. Yeah. I remember my, my young years at Curtis, we had a variety of pianos, mm -hmm. and some of them still had ivory keys. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the piano students, I, you know, when we, at that time, we preferred those pianos because we could grip the, the keys better. We had some other pianos. They must have been made around that time when the plastics were still, were just being introduced. Mm -hmm. Because we noticed an immediate difference. They were slick. Your fingers would slip off. We couldn't grip them. They were, frankly, pretty terrible, mm -hmm. pretty awful. The problem with the ivories, uh, you know, conservation notwithstanding, while we love the grip, it's funny thing was that when the weather got really hot and humid, the ivories would actually sweat. And so you still have the problems of you know, just slipping off the keys too. So they would help sometimes, other times they wouldn't help. But there was a texture that we got accustomed to and really enjoyed. So I remember as a youngster always asking, oh, does the piano have, have, uh, have ivory keys? Um, nowadays, I'm pleased to say that the, the new materials they're using to cover the white keys they have something that makes it They have grip. a texture. Yeah, and yeah. a texture that makes it easy to grip and it doesn't sweat. So it's actually better, in my opinion, than the ivory. So tell us a little bit about that material. Yeah, well, let me also say this. Sure. Not only is that true, but mm. the acrylic will hold up much better. The acrylic can hold up for decades and decades and decades, whereas ivory being an organic substance 
will pop off because it the, brittle, the yeah. adhesives mm -hmm. uh, come off, they crack. Mm -hmm. None of these things will happen to the, yeah. to the others. Yeah. Plus, we don't have to kill elephants. <laughs> right. Best part. Yeah. Yes. So, so today, there's mm -hmm. different brand names. There's Ivorite by Yamaha. Mm. Uh, there, is, there are mineral plastics where there's literally mineral in the plastic. Interesting. Uh, there are acrylics. And all these things have a texture. And the idea is not so much to mimic ivory, but to have that similar kind of a property. Grip. Yes. You want to grip and contact grip. Like I said, better than ivory in that it doesn't sweat. Mm -hmm. That was one thing that really annoyed me about ivory keys. So the key itself, the key mm -hmm. itself is usually made out of a spruce mm -hmm. uh, on the better pianos. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different parts of the key where we'll want to reinforce that where we have pins that they ride upon with a maple, uh, with another type of hardwood uh, to reinforce it. But generally spruce. Spruce is strong and it's light and we don't want a big heavy key. It has to be light so it can go quickly, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And the black keys, are they made generally all of ebony, or what, what sort of woods are they made? There were piano companies that used ebony, but there yeah. really is no reason to have an ebony key, and ebony is a very, very expensive wood. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's mahogany. It's, there's a variety of woods used, and they're all blackened. So I don't think there's any one piece of wood Interesting. that's mm -hmm. used. But generally speaking, a hardwood with a very tight grain or non-existent grain. Okay, That's what interesting. we want. And is, it's interesting too, I remember in one of our previous shoots of this uh, topic, mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about the fact that many times piano manufacturers will use a single slab of wood to cut all the different key parts. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, that's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, for the reason being that uh, wood, as we already talked about, will expand, contract, and over time, because of the grain setup, is going to check mm -hmm. or move a little bit. So if you have two keys, that are cut and they're made out of two different pieces of wood and over time want to go like that, that's very bad for keys. Mm. So cutting them out of one piece of wood, if that were to happen, they're going to check and move Tend the same, same direction. Way. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I have a crazy story. I actually used to make furniture a long time ago. Come a on. table saw, jigsaw, drill press, and everything. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. A little insane. I just was obsessed with, with learning how to do this. And mm -hmm. remember one time this guy came in and saw all my equipment and said, what do you do for a living? I told him, why play the piano? He said, are you crazy? And he showed me his hand. Do you want to end up like me? And he was like <laughs> missing like half his fingers. And it kind of scared me. I think I stopped making you know, furniture after that. But it was, again, one of the things I learned from that experience is exactly what you talked about. Mm -hmm. How fickle wood is you know, and how careful you have to be to understand the grains and understand the the, the way to cut and the way that the woods will behave because they are so dynamic according to humidity and, and, and uh, dryness and temperature and all. So anyway, thank you so much. I think that's a great explanation about one specific part of the piano, the keys, and I think we're going to see if we can dive more into this uh, topic. Yeah? Absolutely. There's lots of things, and now my brain is moving with ideas <laughs> on how to present other parts of now, the now, In fact, that's just the front part of the key. We haven't even talked about the back part of the key, that's right. which is a whole other subject in itself, <laughs> the action. But So I think we've just opened up a big can of worms, which uh, uh, leads me to invite you to please leave us your comments, leave us your please questions, do. so that we can uh, answer those questions in the comments section below. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our weekly newsletter so that you can be notified we have new answers to this really interesting topic that I think we're going to be sitting on for a couple of weeks. So anyway, for Cunningham Piano, I'm Hugh Sung. And I'm Rich Galassini. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.